Okay, boys and girls, ladies and germs. This is your kindly prepper Emberado. I'm always giving guys a hard time about common man doing it with hand tools and junk, repurpose, reuse, give it a new life. Well, I showed you this about a week or two ago. Just the, 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 the concept off the top of my head the minute I found it. We're going to take it a little farther today. What we see here, I had planned on using a coat hanger to make my handle out of. This is not a coat hanger. This is, believe it or not, I've taken the liberty of going ahead and getting started. This was the handle off of a Home Depot bucket that I found on the side of the road smashed to bits. And the only thing that was still in original shape was the handle. Well, I've taken the time, I've beat out all the bends, straightened the wire, measured how much I needed, bent the U-joint in the handle, so that the handle is going to be like this. Took the time, I drilled my holes. See, I had to have it pre-bent, my handle, so I could measure where to put my holes. Drilled them out, so that this will be able to drop right in there through those holes. Yes, I've changed the design. I was going to drill a hole here, hole here, and cut. I decided that'd be a little weak. Instead, I'm going to go down through the top of the pan, and I'm going to have these bend over like that, and then I'm going to have the handle here bend back towards me. So you see it's going to come out and bend over towards the camera, and then it'll hold the pan like this, nice and level once it's been bent. But I don't have a vise handy. And I didn't have an anvil handy to beat all the bends out of this very heavy wire. So, reuse, repurpose, and think outside the box. You are looking at my anvil here at work. This is one heck of a cement block. And you know what? It works pretty good for a smithy's anvil. That's right. There's a reason why... Message received is SMS from 9592. Here we go again. TXT at WFSB.com slash no subject slash update. Woman with gunshot wound found at house fire in Torrington. Redmore, well, HTTP colon slash slash bit. Earlier in the day, there was a report of gunshots at a fire. And it had the firemen and the cops scrambling. Now we've got a woman shot at that same fire. And unless they find a shooter, my bet is somebody had ammunition that got too hot, started going off, and she got hit by one of the rounds going off. That's what I'm suspecting, but it could be something else. We'll have to wait and see. Anyhow, where was I? Oh, yes. Common man tools. There's a reason why my school is called Emberado Smithing and Woodcraft. Because it don't matter whether you're working cold or hot from a forge... No matter what you're using for an anvil, when you're working with metal and you're beating it into shape, it's called blacksmithing. And that's what I'm doing here with a hammer. And that is metal, the, the, the piece of wire that I'm using for the handle. That's metal. So that's blacksmithing. Granted, it's barely blacksmithing, but it is. Just ask Dave, he'll tell you. Um, so now I'm going to go back and sit in the truck, and I'm going to use my vice grips to make some bends in this wire. So these tabs will bend towards the round, and then I will bend to make the finish the Z, so the handle comes back towards the camera. And we'll get back with you when it's that far. Then we'll see about burning off all this paint and stuff. Peace. Okay, we've gotten the first bend made. And it goes, I didn't bring my selfie stick with me today. And the first bend, I'll see if I can get it where you can see it. This is hard to do when I'm trying to get it in, in the camera. This goes in through the holes, like so. Okay, you see this? The first bend goes in through those holes, like so. And the pan, then it will tip up, like this. Uh, all fingers. Now I've made some marks with my magic marker. That's where the next bend is going to happen. And you see here? 
I'm going to have to file those tips just a little bit because they're hitting against the round part, and I don't want that. So i got to file those just a bit, get them to shorten up a little bit. We'll get back to you when I get that accomplished, and then we'll put the uh, last bend in. Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Now, I started this project yesterday, but I got called away to go back to work all of a sudden because one of the drivers didn't show up to do a field trip that he had agreed to do with. So, I had to put it on hold and finish it up today. I almost forgot to show you what I was doing. I put one of the Z-Bends into my handle. Now, here's the deal. It goes in here like so, through that hole, and that's basically what it's going to look like when it... I finished the bends and I did some filing on it yesterday after I put you on hold and it seems to be working just fine as far as that end goes and this end I still need to do some filing on and what am I using for a file you ask a real file this file is destined to become a very large knife once I can get my smithy put back together. I've showed you my anvil. What I didn't show you was underneath was a great big brake drum off of a flatbed wrecker that's going to become my, my uh, primary forge. i got to spend some time with a grinder and cutting on it. and Then i got to find some parts to make my tweer and so on. But remember, I used to have a smithy. But there was my... It was on a piece of land that was owned by my uncle. And he had some real problem neighbors. They didn't like to see a hard-working man make a living. So they kept sending the cops to try and bust me out of there for noise. And they never could. Then they started making my uncle offers for the land. Actually, he's my great uncle, but I digress. They finally made him an obscene offer that even he couldn't refuse. It was a quarter acre of land that my uncle had picked up for taxes. In other words, he probably got it 30 years ago for 15 bucks. They offered him 15000 He shows up with a wrecker to pick up his anvil that I was using at the time. One of them big uh, battleship anvils. I think it would like uh, 575 pounds. And he told me to grab my forge, which was just a little tiny car brake drum at the time, and, and pack it out of there. I says, well, what about my uh, pole barn thing? He says, I don't care. Take it down, take it with you, burn it, leave it for the other people. I don't care, he says. So that's just what I did. I took the hot bowl of coals, and I threw them up on the roof and watched the thing burn to the ground. It wasn't dug into the ground. It was just a pole barn sitting on the ground. It was movable, but... I didn't have a way to move it. All the people buying the land were awful upset with that. They didn't get the barn. I said, well, the barn wasn't my uncle's property to sell. That was mine. And you didn't offer me any money. And you gave me nothing but trouble. So why would I be kind and leave anything of mine for you? <laughs> they did not like that notion. Not one iota. I tell you, right straight up, they didn't like it. But you know what? Khan got it right in the wrath of Khan. Revenge is a dish best served ice cold. I guess I'm cold. <laughs> Let's see how we're doing for fit here. Nice, nice. That'll do. Now, to get that other half of that Z-Bend, I don't have a vice with me. That's at home. So, where's my mark? There it is. There it is. I'm simply going to use a pair of vice grips. And... Now then. Yeah, I know. It bent crooked. Not a problem. Uh-huh. And then I got to tweak this one a little bit. Uh, 
There we go. Yep. That'll do. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you repurpose, retask, and make useful somebody else's junk. It's not a large fry pan by any stretch of the imagination, but that will most indubitably hold a couple of half strips of bacon at a time, a couple of eggs over easy, not a problem. Next step, I gotta put this over fire and burn off all the paint. Unfortunately, again today, I don't have the time to finish this video today. So we'll make cleaning and burning this project off for tomorrow. But there we have it for today. We'll catch you with part three of this tomorrow. Peace out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do you remember this? Showed it to you some weeks back. Okay, this is probably part three of my video, so you already know what I'm doing here. I already burned it. I videotaped burning it, but that video got corrupted. Turned out nice and... I know it don't look it, but that's a nice... That's as smooth as a baby's butt in there. And now when I cure it with some oil overheat, it's going to put a nice coating in there. Non-stick. Great for eggs. Remember I told you this is a panty when a gram weenie would love? Okay. See this here? Let's give it a second. And look at that, nice and zeroed. 46.6 grams. I told you it was less than 50. Now, I did tell you I was going to use coat hanger, hanger wire. I went heavier. This is that handle out of a Home Depot bucket. So it's a bit heavier. See what this does to the weight. Ooh, okay, brings it up to almost 80. I imagine if I'd used a coat hanger wire, it would have been right about where I predicted, 55 to 60. Because look at this, the pan is only 46. So, that 80, that's, you know, that's 30 grams just for the handle. But, at 80 grams, and let's see now, uh, what would that be? Uh, huh. Hang on here. That'd be 2.8 ounces. Oh, wait a minute. Back to the grams. Yeah, it'd be 2.8 ounces for a frying pan. Now, can you beat that? Hmm. Prepper Embarado. Peace out. Oh, hello boys and girls, ladies and germs. What you see is the process of seasoning my new steel fry pan. I've coated it in oil and I'm heating it to carbonize it. Why would you carbonize it with oil? Well, that's how you get a seasoned non-stick surface in your pan. And there's only one way to do it. It takes time and heat and oil. See the pad? That's what you see is brown in the pan there. Sorry about reaching in front of the camera, but as I keep daubing it with oil and heating it. I still have one last thing to do to this pan before it's finished. This handle, I'm going to wrap it in jute, a couple layers deep, and then I'll probably epoxy it, or I'll melt some uh, paracord onto the ends to keep it in place, something like that. And I will have a non-stick fry pan that any gram weenie in the country would give their eye teeth to fry eggs in. See that? Ain't that sweet? Hang on a second here. I gotta set you down here. And the only way I can do that, 
Oh, bother. My thing has come apart again. I'm going to have to re-epoxy that. Dang it. Well, so I can't do you the way I was going to do you. Can't set you down that way. Well, but you see what I'm up to. Next time you see this frying pan, I'm probably going to be doing a video. Something that was started with Manland and uh, uh, Swedish wan uh, Scottish Wanderer. I think that's his channel handle. But we'll get back to that on the weekend. In the meantime, this is Prepper Embarado. Peace out.